Welcome to MathCast edition 13. Today we will be using the area model again we'll, to illustrate factoring a difference of squares. So we'll be returning to the area model to illustrate a factoring of difference of squares. So as a quick review, uh, positive algae tiles will be represented by blue tiles, negative algae tiles will be represented by red tiles, and a reminder that tiles can only be in contact on the side length that they have that's shared or in common or the same length. To illustrate that, notice how the x and the x squared here have the exact same length. Those two can be in contact, but the positive one can never touch the x squared because it does not have a side length that's the same. Even if we stack a bunch of them, this is incorrect and not acceptable, so we can't do this. Quick review, in earlier math casts when we were expanding or multiplying binomials and monomials together, we were starting from the dimensions side of the multiplication array and working towards the area. When we were looking at other forms of factoring, we were starting with the area model or the area inside and working towards the dimensions. Because we are factoring a difference of squares, we will again be starting from the area and working towards the dimensions. Quick review, difference is the operation of subtraction. And when I say squares, I am referring to either squared terms such as unknowns like x squared or perfect square numbers like 16, 25, 36, 49, etc. Example one. I want to factor x squared minus 4. So right away I can see that I have a problem because I'm not allowed to put my x's against my x squared because they do not have the same side length. Yet I'm trying to make a rectangle in here where I can calculate the outside dimensions. So what I have to do to even start before I can start this problem is I have to introduce some more terms using the zero principle. So if I introduce a negative x to balance that, I have to also introduce a positive x. Now you can see that if I do that, that uses up one of my negative ones. Well, let's keep going with this idea. I'm going to introduce another negative x and another positive x. And oddly enough, I now have enough spaces to use up all of my negative ones. So if we measure or count the edge dimensions, x times x will give me the x squared term I'm looking for. Negative 1 times x gives me the negative x, so I can repeat that here. And that gives me a side of x minus 2. If I look at the top, I put a plus 1, x times positive 1, I get x and negative 1 times positive 1, I get negative 1, so that seems to fit. And what we should notice is we have x plus 2 as our dimension on the top. So when I factor x squared minus 4, I end up with x plus 2, x minus 2. Now you may wish to pause this for a moment and take a good look at those numbers. There are some patterns there that we're going to take advantage of in the near future. My next example, x squared minus 9. Again, there's nothing I can do with these 1's against the x squareds because there is no side that they have in common. So I need to invoke the zero principle again and introduce some more terms. So let's introduce an x or 2. So I have to balance those with negative x's. And we can see, well, that uses up one of the negative 1's. So let's add a few more x's here and their accompanying zero pairs the negative x's. So I'm still in balance. These three positive x's cancel off these three negative x's, but it does allow me to fill in some of these missing spaces. And look at that. I've made a nice rectangle, or in this case a square. And if I count up my edge dimensions here, x times x is x squared, x times positive 1 is positive x, so those are working nicely. So I'll fill in the rest of those. And I will have a dimension of x plus 3 on the top. 
I check this dimension here, I have a negative 1 times x to get negative x, so that works. And negative 1 times positive 1 is negative 1. So those seem to be the correct dimensions. And when I bring up my written form, I begin to see a bit of a pattern here. So the factored form of x squared minus 9 is x plus 3 and x minus 3. Hmm. Last example, a little more complex. I have 4x squared minus 9. So similar to the last example, only I have more x squared terms. So again, I can see right away that I can't put these ones in anywhere against the x squared because I don't have the right length of side. So I need to introduce some more terms and I'm going to observe some of the patterns I've used in the last two examples and I'm going to add more x's and negative x's to try and balance this off. Okay, so I still need some more. So I'm adding them in pairs as I go to maintain my zero principle, but I can start to see I'm getting a little bit more here. It looks like I need at least one more. There we are. I'll put that guy in there. And look at that. We've made our square. So now when I measure the dimensions, on the left-hand side, I have 2x minus 3. And on the top, I have 2x plus 3. Now, hopefully you're starting to see that when we factor a difference of squares, the signs are always opposite. And there's another connection between these numbers here that I'll explore in MathCast 14. But I'll let you speculate on what that is. But for now, why don't we try this one? x squared minus 16. Pause the video here, take your best shot, and let's see what you come up with. Well, here we go. Here's my x squared minus 16. And watching the patterns from the last few examples, you start to see pretty quickly how this works. Well, so those all balance from the zero principle. The positive and the negatives cancel each other off. I measure those dimensions. Look at that. And I come up with x squared minus 16 equals x plus 4 times x minus 4. Again, opposite signs inside the brackets. Might even start seeing a pattern here in the numbers and the, and the unknowns. Well, thank you for your time. Again, if you have any suggestions, questions, or comments, please send me an email at childs underscore math at yahoo.com.